comparing those to the actual. And again, we would expect some of the averages to be of, above and below. They're not gonna be exact, even though we took a larger sample from 10 to 100 this time, but we would expect that they would approximate closer towards you know, a middle, a middle point with this kind of spread, this type of data. So if I select this and let's put our, our tools around it. Now notice you might also, let's insert uh, another column. I'm gonna insert a column between BP and BQ. So I'm going to, to do that, to insert an entire column, it always inserts to the left. So if I select BQ, the entire column, right click on the selected and insert, it will insert a column to the left. Now you gotta be careful of doing that if there's anything below it that's gonna be messed up, but there's nothing below here. So that's the easiest way to kind of move this stuff to the right. So the other way, if there was something below, then if I undo that, uh, hold on a second, it's thinking. If I undo that, if there was something like below here, I can select just these items. I can pull it to the right like this, or I could, I could cut, right click and cut, which is more efficient and paste it to the right like that. Or one more time, I could select these cells and then I want to shift these to the right by right clicking let's it's now I got to get rid of the dancing ants so I'm going to double click select these cells right click and insert and then I can say I want to shift them not down but rather to the right so then I can shift them to the right so a bunch of different ways you can do the same thing which will be useful depending on whether there's data to the bottom or to the right of it for example so then I could say let's take the average of the averages right I could say well I did I took the 100 tests and I got the average for each test. Let's take the average of the averages. And so that gives us the the 6799, which is, which is pretty, which is like right on basically, you know, we can add more decimals because this is all, this is actually uh, longer decimals than two. So it's not going to be perfect, but you know, you get you, you get pretty close uh, with that because that's pretty that's a lot that you know that we kind of come. So let's make this font group and brackets and uh, put some borders around this. And then now, of course, if you wanted to, you can also insert histograms from this information. We could make like eleven histograms for each of the data sets of a hundred data points. We could make a histogram as well of the averages of the results, but there's only 11 of them. So that might not be enough data uh, to do that. But you know, if you chose like the entire uh, sample, let's say sample 11 here, and I'm gonna hold down control shift down to the bottom. And then I'm holding down shift to not pick up the total. So that I, and then I scroll up. So I just wanna go down to 101, not 102. And then I'm going to hold down control backspace, taking me back to the top. I know I'm, little, I'm using a lot of keystrokes here, but I'm just trying to point out that if you have a large set of data, that's going to be more efficient than, than like scrolling down and then scrolling up. Although you can do either one, even with a hundred data points, it's not too bad to scroll down. But when you get really large data sets, then it's useful to use the keystrokes. So then we can go to the insert and we can go to the charts and insert a histogram. So now you've got a histogram of that last sample. Oh man, I deleted the, <laughs> of that last sample. So you, you can see it kind of approximates the actual histogram, right? Here's the, act you could say, here's the actual histogram. And then here's our sample, that last sample uh, of, of 100. So it might be, it, you, let's let's put, uh, the sample of 100. If I did a couple of these, let's say we did number 10, control, sh I'm putting my control shift down, shift up, and then uh, control backspace. And then I'm going to put this one next to it over here. Insert charts, histogram, boom. So here's, here's another one of sample 10. So, right, so, and then let's just make 
one more to get an idea. We got a different spreads of the data of 100. Shift down and uh, and uh, shift up and then control backspace. And then I'm going to scroll to the right, shift to the loo, scroll to the right, and then skip to the loo, and then scroll to the right. That's a song, Skip to the Loo, My Darling. I'm not sure what the loo, I think that's an instrument, but whatever. Uh, then we're going to go to the Insert tab, and then Charts, drop down, Histogram. And so here's another histogram, and so you can get an idea of you know when i when i when i pull these what's the spread of each of these of e, of each of these samples of uh of 100 and and notice one of the questions we come to is well how close are to we to the center point that's what we've been looking at and also you know what are, is the characteristic shape of the spread uh also kind of similar to the actual data set that's another kind of question that we would like to be able to know and it can help us to then also think about how confident we are that like the actual center point and the and the distance you know the distances between them is 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 uh is correct which we'll get into more technically later but for now we, we want to just practice using our excel tools as well to kind of think about how we can create some of these random samples and manipulate uh uh some of the data and then and then do our calculations on them